Alrighty, we are back with an interesting video. Interesting from my perspective because of the irony that Floyd Money Mayweather Jr., who is considered by many as the GOAT in professional boxing, is receiving backlash for making a statement regarding his honest thoughts of the Terence Crawford versus Errol Spence super fight which occurred last week. Now, I find it ironic simply because I see the similarities between Floyd fans back in the day and Bud fans today, just like with Bud. If you suggested Mayweather actually lost a fight or was picking fighters when at that point they were broken, Floyd fans would go ballistic. Well anyway, that's for another video. What makes this statement so controversial is because once again we have a professional within the world of boxing alluding to the idea that Errol Spence was not in his true form stepping in the ring against Terence Crawford. And this is driving Terence Crawford's supporters up the wall. And if you're one of them, let me know in the comment section right now how frustrated you are by all of these opinions suggesting that based on the open workouts where Spence looked rusty, was getting countered by his own coach, why during the final press conference he barely uttered a word, during Spence's walkout, where various channels have shown comparisons of Spence walking out for Porter, Ugas and previous fights, where he looks enthusiastic, fully awake, yet for the Crawford walkout, he looks half awake. Again, excuses, excuses. The man looks fine, he smokes weed, he drinks. Everyone's just trying to deny Terence Crawford's greatness. I feel your pain, guys. But anywho, let's hear what Mayweather has to say, but let's also break down everything he says before he gets to that controversial statement. Well, there's a difference. I could speak on my opponent. I only can speak from what I know. I can't do an interview and badmouth Tange Crawford. I'm not going to do it. Absolutely not. I'm not going to badmouth Earl Spence. I can't do that. Um, I don't want to be biased. I don't want to sound like I'm hating or I'm mad at anyone. So when I say certain things, I'm not taking shots at no fighters. I'm just saying Speak it from the heart, because I respect all three of those guys. So it sounds to me like Mayweather is going out of his way to make sure no one takes offense because he's aware whatever he's going to say is going to upset people. He's not trying to undermine anyone. In his own words, he's speaking from the heart. Now for context, the interviewer made a comparison between Spence vs. Crawford and Mayweather vs. Corrales, who is sadly no longer with us. So my fight with Diego Corrales, it wasn't for the undisputed title and they fought for an undisputed title. When me and Diego Corrales fought, he was considered the boogeyman. 30 and 0, if I'm not mistaken, 27 knockouts. Myself, I was undefeated also in 20 something fights. And that was a huge fight at that particular time. And I was in my 20s and he was in his 20s. So it was totally different. So it sounds like the first excuse is that Crawford and Spence weren't fighting in their prime, which I guess to many of you wouldn't make sense, right? The surface level answer would be, but Crawford is older than Spence. Yes, that's true. But fighting in your prime is often more related to wear and tear. Mayweather continues. But, you know, with these two guys fighting, it was, um, you know, um, I can't really speak on it. I don't really want to speak on that fight because I don't want to take nothing away from Terrence Crawford or Earl Spence. So, you know, I can dance around talking about the fight, but I would never badmouth these fighters that get in there and put it all on the line to take care of their families, um, take care of their friends, and they got a team that's behind them. So both of those guys went out there and they did what they had to do and the best man won. But if I was training him or I was in his corner, I don't think he should be fighting at 147 at all. I don't think he should be fighting at 154. I think he should be fighting at 160 or 168. That's just my honest opinion. But once again, I don't have no say so. You know, when these guys, you know, certain fighters where they want to fight, our job is to line it up. And us fighters, we're warriors. We go always wear we always want to fight the best. It's just how it is. So the big controversy here is that Mayweather simply doesn't feel like Spence should continue fighting at 147, but he takes it a step further, stating that he also shouldn't be fighting at 154. The question is, why would he say that? I mean, Errol Spence has had 29 fights at 147. So do you think it's possible that with Mayweather's close relationship with Al Heyman, Al Heyman being Errol Spence's promoter, are we able to think past surface level, put our critical thinking hats on and assume that Floyd Mayweather knows more than us and that just possibly he's not hating on Terence Crawford. And I understand it's hard to break away from that narrative when the majority of well-established American boxing channels are only offering to you takes at surface level. Therefore, they create the narrative and then you regurgitate it on other people's channels. But if you try and think for yourself, if Mayweather was hating on Terence Crawford, he would have been content to say that Spence needs to move up to 154. But instead, 
said he's adamant Spence should be fighting at 160 or 168. Al Heyman is Spence's promoter. If we were to be rational, the likelihood is Mayweather knows something that we don't. Spence didn't look himself going into the fight as well as in the fight, most pointing to round one. The same round where Crawford stated, after Spence hit me with his first shot, I was thinking, is that it? In what recent fight have you seen so many professionals within the world of boxing either allude, suggest, or state that Spence was not himself both before and during the fight. I mean, Andre Ward's trainer is practically pleading for Spence to get checked out by a professional neurologist. Any rational human being would simply question why he would make that statement, being that Virgil Hunter is affiliated with people in Spence's team and might know something we don't know. There is no conclusion at this moment. All we are receiving is more information to help us form an objective opinion. And it's of my opinion, based on the information so far, that yeah, perhaps there was something wrong with Errol Spence. But at its early stage, it's being shut down completely by people who claim not to be Terence Crawford fanatics, yet leave comments like these. As I've said previously, if you admit that Spence wasn't himself going into the fight, then for you, that takes away from Terence Crawford's glory. It, um, I just want him to give himself time to be very reasonable, to look at your children. Go to the neurologist, go to the doctor, get the honest opinion. Don't get the opinion that you want to hear. Get the honest opinion from two or three of them. Tell them, look, don't tell me what I want to hear. Tell me the truth. If you get thrown out of a car going over 120 miles per hour, you're going to have some repercussions that people are not going to see right away, but it's going to show up on you at a time when you least expect it to show up. Last night was something like I'd never seen before. Never seen a guy's face turn that color in the second round of a fight. That tells you that there had to be a lot of work done to bring him back. That accident might have really, you know, affected Earl Spence, bro. I mean, hindsight, when you look at it, he only had two fights since that accident. He got hurt with Ugas. He maybe never really fully recovered. But I'm going to tell you, bro, these people that's uh, in positions to work with these fighters, they got to love them enough to be honest with them. Stop lying to these fighters, bro. They're not doing it. In the gym, it ain't gonna happen on fight night. I just think like you can see, you can see it in his face. Even before he walked out, he looked a little drained. He looked a little uh, weary. And then in the fight, you can actually see him like falling over his steps, falling over his parts, falling over his seat. He, he's not like no, a super crumpy person. So that's not the error we we know. That's not the error we know. If you just look at it for what it is, I rate Terence Crawford, but is an elite fighter, and so is Errol. Errol just wasn't, uh, he, I know that wasn't the guy that I've watched many a times before. Sorry. He has to pay attention, his parents has to pay attention to his speech patterns, his walk patterns, his reactive patterns. He, he needs to be tested neurologically. He needs to be tested. He needs to go through a battery of tests, brain scans, things like that. He needs to cover all the bases. Don't let that one punch let your head hit that canvas and bounce off that canvas and there you go with a brain bleed because you were in a serious wreck and you don't know that one punch in the right place could give you that brain bleed. Errol, if you hear me, please don't look for that fight this year and 